Number 149, why do companies, at least large companies, seem to dislike OPC UA embedded? This podcast is brought to you by Ignition from Inductive Automation. This is Gary Mitchell. Just returned from Germany, actually as in just returned from Germany, uh, where I was attending the Hanover Messe, the uh, famous Hanover Fair uh, in uh, north central Germany. Uh, huge show. Uh, I don't know how many buildings were occupied by uh, manufacturing this year, but I only saw really three, but there were at least, I don't know, 20 more. Uh, in, in various guises. So it's, it's a huge show, a lot, lot going on, and I sp- spent a lot of time, uh, in, you know, <laughs> sitting in uh, press conferences and also walking all over the place. I walked over five miles a day for four days, each day, and uh, so it was all pretty good. Yeah, a lot of really interesting people, a lot of uh, cool technology, huge, huge booths. Nothing we see in the United States where. Um, you know, booths are, you know, if it's 40 by 40, it's a huge booth. Oh, no, no, no. The Siemens booth was as at least as large as a soccer pitch. And for the athletically challenged, that uh, take a football field uh, from goalpost to goalpost and then add about 15, 20 yards on each side of the sidelines. And a uh, soccer pitch is wider than a football field, that's all. But anyway, it, it was a huge, a huge booth with just lots of stuff in it, including a couple of uh, SUVs and a bunch of other demos. Uh, Microsoft had a jet engine. Another booth had a jet engine, as in a real jet engine. And other stands were really big. Um, Beckoff Automation always has a really huge one. And uh, BNR, I went through BNR Automation, a uh, huge one. Um, and then many others. I spent time at Profinet booth and uh, OPC booth. Uh, let's see, I think I mentioned Microsoft. SAP, Intel were there. Um, uh, company, an MES company I know called 4Cam. I spent a little bit of time there and many other places. So a huge show, a lot, lot going on. I've already written up my my review of Siemens or most of my review of Siemens. A uh, huge booth, a lot of stuff going on. Check out themanufacturingconnection.com and get my uh, impression of that. Um, disclaimer, they paid some of my expenses and exchange I got uh, a lot of behind the scenes interviews I wouldn't I wouldn't have normally gotten actually Uh, so I learned an awful lot more than than typically um, and there was a lot to learn Uh, that's a company that stated a a strategy to me in 2006 started to execute in 2007 and I didn't think there was any way they'd ever pull it off it's a digital factory and it's going really well so um, uh, you know, kudos, you know, uh, when Anton Huber spoke to me 10 years ago, uh, you know, he laid it out in 2007 when they, uh, he came and talked to me again in an interview and they had purchased uh, UGS, which became Siemens PLM. And I said, you know, your track record, quite frankly, isn't all that good in, in acquisitions. And he said, we will do better this time. We have been studying. They did better, and they've integrated quite well. Long way to go to fulfill the vision of digital manufacturing, but they've done an awful lot. And a lot of other technologies going on. OPC UA is still collaborating uh, in their messaging, or OPC Foundation with OPC UA. Uh, and I actually talked with Stan Schneider, uh, who owns a company, RTAI, uh, and uh, but he was representing OMG Object Management Group, and he also uh, I believe is on the board with IIC Industrial Internet Consortium. Uh, but those three use a protocol called DDS, and DDS is is a is a transport mechanism for transporting packets. Uh, OPC UA is a packet protocol uh, technology for moving messages. Um, and people thought those, those were competitive, but it turns out to be they're not competitive, they're complementary, and, uh, and that's what they're trying to do is these organizations come together in a collaborative uh, framework to better the end users for moving data around uh, manufacturing um, plants and enterprises all the way. Um, and Profinet, uh, when I talked to, to Carl over there, uh, the one comment, the, the kind of main comment was was interesting that t- 2015 was the first year that Profinet nodes purchased exceeded Profi bus nodes purchased. So we've seen the uh, the trends for quite a long time, and now the Ethernet part of it is growing. It, it, it has exceeded sales over the uh, 
the traditional field bus one. So, um, and, and there's just so much more. I'll be printing out more or writing out more. I uh, had the opportunity to be the moderator of what's called a think tank. I've never done one of those before. Um, Dell, uh, a client, uh, put this together and they brought a lot of their partners together in a room. Well, you know, a representative uh, of partners from CEOs of some integrator companies to uh, to other people, somebody from from Intel and uh, and SAP and a number of other companies. And uh, what we did was we talked about Internet of Things and my job was like throw balls out there and let them swing at it. And it uh, was just an open exchange of ideas and I'll be doing more on that line, uh, writing that up a little bit later. So watch for the Dell stuff, watch a little bit more on Siemens and all the other places I visited while I was at Hanover. But the thing that really uh, stuck out in people's minds and um, which was uh, really kind of uh, interesting was a press conference that I could not attend. I, I had to be two other places at the same time and I'm only me. So I, I didn't go to the ODVA press conference. Typically those aren't very controversial. Well, in this case, it's controversial. It became the subject of discussion amongst everybody in automation I talked to, including my German friends. <clears throat> so this, this um, press conference announced that uh, the, a spatial interest group will be formed, a SIG, and it will uh, begin to lay out a specification for SIP, CIP in the cloud. Now let me back up a second. So, <coughs> excuse me, so ODVA uh, is the owner of Ethernet slash IP, Ethernet IP. They got real cute years ago and I still poke them at that. So that's Ether with a capital N net slash IP, which stands for industrial protocol, not internet protocol. So now that they've tried to confuse things, uh, so the, the I in the industrial protocol is CIP and that's common industrial protocols is the name of it. And it is a messaging thing. And it that's the real Ethernet IP is, is the protocol. And uh, been a lot of development on it. It's it's used. I mean, Rockwell has devoted. I mean, its strategy is to use that. That is its strategy. Um, I think it's used in the backplane, or at least it was. That was explained to me years ago that they would be using it in, in all kinds of messaging. So this they announced this CIP now SIP in the cloud, and the idea is <clears throat> that they have a protocol that fits within their their overarching um, world of Ethernet IP. And uh, this one will take data from, for example, a, a Rockwell PLC or somebody else's controller or whatever cut device and transport it into the cloud so that it can be used by ERP or MES systems uh, directly. Um, and it's got embedded security and it's got a number of other things. And as uh, Catherine Voss, the executive director, was explaining this, um, even non-technical journalists, but those who have been around a long time, turned around and looked at Tom Burke, the OPC Foundation uh, president, and kind of like, isn't this OPC UA? Well, it's not developed yet, so we don't know for sure. Uh, when Catherine was asked questions, she just basically said, hey, I'm the executive director, and <clears throat> if somebody wants, and it's one of our members wants to start a, a special interest group, you know, we, we kind of do it. And we'll be working on it. It'll be a couple of years until we have a specification released. So, in other words, not really an answer, but actually the best that Catherine can do. Let's, you know, face it. So, um, so then the conversation started. I came along and I ran into uh, Tom and a bunch of other people, uh, most of whom will remain nameless, and uh, and everybody's speculating what's going on. So, first off, is which one of the major members of ODBA really wants this? this uh, thing. After a lot of conversations, uh, the consensus, heck consensus, uh, everyone believed that Rockwell is the major vendor or major member of ODVA that wants this new SIP protocol. <clears throat> so then the question is, why? Well, one of, one of the things I heard from a, a pretty respected thinker, well, I respect him anyway, or I wouldn't even say this, was that Siemens has developed a, 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 a cloud and it's called MindSphere and it uses SAP's uh, HANA um, <clears throat> infrastructure and it, 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 I can't explain it all, I'm not even going to try to, to do it here but it's a way of, of customers having data in the cloud and Siemens owns the cloud but Siemens doesn't own the data 
an aside here, let me just do a little sidebar. Nobody talked about the metadata. And if you know anything about all this kind of programming stuff and the way Facebook, Google, and other people, you know, make money, uh, it's not on the data, it's the metadata. So uh, we'll see where, I, this is not to be nefarious, I mean, it's just the way of the world in, in web programming. But anyway, so, you know, if Rockwell is a little bit worried about Siemens doing that, <coughs> they probably figured that they needed their own protocol so that they could control the messaging all the way up uh, from their devices to the cloud. Um, sounded reasonable, pretty strategic, um, and, and, and thus far Rockwell hasn't shown itself to really want to be a, um, a software uh, supplier. I mean, they have software and they do it, and but they, as an overarching company strategy, it just doesn't seem to, to fit. They seldom talk to me about it. Um, and so the other theory going along was that uh, somebody at Rockwell uh, was really concerned that if you embed OPC UA, it becomes the same thing as SIP, which means that it's a competitor to SIP and people could use it and then uh, Rockwell could lose a competitive advantage. So it's a theory. I sent a couple of emails out trying to uh, ask some sources for information. I'm still waiting. As soon as I get it, I'll update you. I tend to go with the second, uh, second theory. Uh, I came from multitude of respected sources, and um, and it sort of makes sense because another company a couple of years ago, I lost track of time, uh, also had problem with embedding OPC UA, raised a big fuss about it, and they just wanted, or that company, it uh, wanted to have only OPC UA on a Microsoft platform on .NET. Uh, therefore, OPC UA would, would act like classic OPC, meaning that its only use is if somebody wanted to tie a third-party peripheral to their automation system, they could use this version of OPC UA, which wouldn't be as good as their own proprietary protocols, which would be faster, smoother, you know, all that stuff. Um, and therefore, obviously, to try to keep um, companies, their end customers, uh, in, the, in the fold, if you will. Um, and so this is the very traditional thing we've seen in automation forever, and you've seen it in almost anything else, is technology providers want to lock in the customer. Uh, now, granted, if everything is built by the, the one technology provider, it should work better together. It doesn't always, but it should. Uh, however, um, customers want to use the best, and they don't. I mean, they'd like to have a long-term relationship with a company. But what happens if the company gets bought? What happens if the company goes out of business? What happens if the company has me so locked in, I no longer have any way out, and now they can raise prices greatly every year? And so companies then start to do things to threaten. I'm working on some other standards, some interoperability standards ideas, and they're driven by end users. End users, I, I know the end user view. I was one, you know, and uh, and I see this. And so I look at this uh, this little kerfluffle of of SIP in the cloud and OPC UA embedded. Um, as, as a little bit of that uh, posturing and, and gesturing, and we'll see where it goes. I mean, this is a long way down the road, and OPC you, it has Foundation has been out collaborating with everybody. It is so widely adopted. OPC UA is just so much better than the classic OPC. You just can't believe it. Um, gee, I sound like a proponent. They don't even pay me. Hey, Tom. You know. But anyway, no. Um, but... Uh, so, so I'm going on with that. So this is all interesting, and that was the, the main speculation going on at, uh, at Hanover amongst the automation people. Other than that, it's a great show. Go. Next year, you know, get your tickets, go to Hanover, um, and uh, enjoy the show. It's huge. Uh, German food is great. Uh, German beer. Well, it's German beer. What can I say? So, uh, you know, go over. I hope to make it back again next year and, and enjoy the conference and meet really fascinating people and see fascinating technology and, uh, and enjoy the German landscape for a while. So this is Gary Mitchell. Um, this is number 149. Why do companies dislike OPC UA embedded? And this podcast is brought to you by Ignition from Inductive Automation. Thank you. Have a good day.